Welcome to Personal Brand Power Hour. I'm Sophia Spolino, host of Social Equity, and I'm so excited to be giving my brain to you for a whole hour as we talk about social media strategy, personal branding, and having an entrepreneur mindset as women. So welcome. Everyone's coming in. So happy you're here. So happy you're here. Welcome to the Personal Brand Power Hour. I'm Sophia, host of Social Equity, the podcast, and I'm so excited that you're joining me today. I want you to be thinking of questions that you have in regards to building your personal brand and social media. Oh, hey, Alex, how are you? So happy to see you here. Hi, Stella. Hi, Almond. Hi, Lucky Chick. Hi, JM. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, I'm so excited because we're going to be talking about uh, authenticity and personal branding and how this really affects your business when your business is based on you and your face, which is so different. Oh, Queen Malicious is here. When it's, it's so different when your face is what represents your business. So I want to know who here has a brand that is based on their face and who here has a brand that is based on a service that they offer that has nothing to do with them, their face yet or a product that they offer that has nothing to do with their face yet. I believe that personal branding is so important. So even if your business is a product and you think no one sees your face, at the end of the day, people are going to be looking up you on the internet. They're gonna be Googling you. And I had to learn things the hard way because I got to where I am on social media creating a completely different type of content than what I wanna be known for now. What I wanna be known for now is the girl who I've always been a girl who drinks lots of water, gets her antioxidants, and has a brain. <laughs> but instead, I went viral for the wrong things, and I want to help you guys build a personal brand strategically, because even if you think that what you do on the internet has nothing to do with your business or who you are at work, you're building social equity. So let me explain why. If you work in an office and you lose that job, they let you go, what you have built as your social uh, social equity is your online legacy. Your new future employers will be looking at it. If you're positioning yourself as a leader in your industry, even if that industry you think is, okay, I'm working at the job, I love it, I'm gonna work here for life, I don't need to have a backup plan, having a personal brand is your backup plan, it is your security, because you're positioning yourself as a leader. It doesn't mean you're trying to be an influencer. And I think that's what people get worried about when they show their face online. They're like, what are my friends and family going to think? They're gonna think that I'm trying to be an influencer as if it's a dirty word, but it's not. You're building social equity. You're making sure that you have an asset for yourself that you can rely on if the product that you are selling, you need to pivot. People know your face. They're going to trust your face. People buy from people they know and trust. So that is the importance of social equity. Let's see, someone needs to wipe this girl off media. Oh, thank you. Okay, so let's go through. I want you to be thinking of questions that have to do with showing up on social media and authenticity. And I know that word gets thrown around so much. Let me take a drink here. Can you guys hear my theme music, but also hear me good? Cause I start to like yell, I get so excited. And the Italian in me is like, hands, voice. I get super loud. <laughs> so tell me I don't need to yell so I can not yell. Oh, hey, lucky chick. Hey, Amanda votes. Ross, thank you so much. Totally looking for the future wife, <laughs> as always. Okay, Robbie's here. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about authenticity. For those of you just joining, thank you for tuning into the Personal Brand Power Hour. I am Sophia Spolino, and I'm here to teach you about building social equity, meaning your personal brand on social media. And Robert has done this really, really well. So I want to see if he's available. I'll invite him. To see. He is. Let's see. Does he have reception? Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Yes, I am inviting my ex-boyfriend into the live. <laughs> okay, so while we're waiting for Robert to join, I want you to be thinking about any questions that you have to do with your personal brand or your business brand 
this is a time for you to get free access to my brain. So please, if there's any questions that you have, I'm happy to answer them. While we're waiting for Robert, I'm going to go ahead and get started with what I think is the most important thing that comes to authenticity on the internet. I think there's this trend of being like so authentic, super authentic, and that almost comes across now as inauthentic. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Drop an emoji if you know what I'm talking about. And it's like, it's almost like a little gag because it's like, it's oversharing. It's just too much. And it's, it's like, was that planned? Of course, there's strategy behind everything you do on social media when you're trying to build a personal brand. But sometimes being too authentic, to me at least, comes across as inauthentic. Does anyone else get that? Does anyone else relate? Hello, welcome to the Personal Brand Power. I see new people coming in. Thank you for joining. It looks like Robert is trying to come on, but he's not there yet. Hmm. Let me just shoot him a little text and let him know. Not working. Okay. So for those of you just joining, yes, I am inviting my ex-boyfriend to join the live if he's available because Robert has built successful product brands, but right now is working on his personal brand. Um, he says he can see me and you. Okay. Log out and try again. Okay. I'm going to try one more time. Welcome to the Personal Brand Power Hour. I'm your host, Sophia Spolino. I'm so excited to be here teaching you how to build social equity, meaning your personal brand and asset for yourself on social media. I'm waiting for Robert to join. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I hear him. I can hear him for a second. There he is. There we are. There he is. Thank you for joining, Robbie. No problem. I just got hey. back from a nice little uh Yeah, were you shooting a video? Shooting content. Okay, so let's talk about it because I'm today the topic is talking about authenticity and kind of towing the line of like what's fake authenticity on the internet and why that puts a bad taste in people's mouth and how to tow the line between what I was about to get into you guys is being slightly like a little bit above the cuff, like being someone that people can trust and admire in your niche, but also relatable at the same time. It's, it's towing the line. It's, it's a balance, I think. Don't you think? Yeah, I think the key for me is and why social media works for me and, and my content is because I don't have a fancy studio. I don't have a bunch of editors. I just go on a walk or a hike and I talk about what I'm thinking about that day or I talk to the pain points of the comments that I get in all of my videos. So for me, it's just, I'm speaking from the heart and experience. So it's a lot easier. Whereas yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people that are, you know, doing content, especially specific content for specific topics, they're not sincere because they don't really have the experience and they're really just trying to put out content to become something or someone or sell something. So it's, it just feels a little more pressed and a lot less natural, in my opinion. Oh, I agree. And I think what's really cool about your videos is you're pressed because you're getting out of breath because you're actually on a hike. And I think that's something different. I think TikTok, when it started, when we started, luckily when we started, which by the way, everybody, Robert totally pushed me to get a TikTok. And I was like, I don't want another thing. And he was like, you have to jump on this right now and really encouraged me to dive in. And it, it, it's made my business what it is today to have the TikTok presence. So going back to what we were talking about, when you started making these videos that are now super successful, did you know your first one was going to be because you were just, I know like you had scripted it and I think Maybe even you sent me the script. I'm not sure if you sent me this one to look at it before. We had just done two lessons together. And I was like, okay, do this, do this, do this. And you did it. You took off with it. You ran. What, what was it? Was this first one really scripted? The one that went really viral recently? Not really. I think the key is it goes back to authenticity and the whole topic of this live is that I had just really studied TikTok for a week prior and I noticed that every single person in my peer group 
that had anything to do with financial or real estate or entrepreneurship, they all had the exact same style of content in a studio, super scripted, super like, you know, over edited. And I just don't think people resonate with that because they don't feel it's authentic. When you're just speaking from the heart and going, you know, I don't carry a script with me. I don't have like anything to look at. I'm just walking and talking is I just think people feel a, a greater level of trust when they feel it comes from somebody like me that's older, that's done it already, that's been successful. And they feel like, because a lot of people are really lost right now in this economy and trying to figure out where they fit. And so yeah. I think I think with the simplicity of my videos and because they're heartfelt, I think people feel like it's it's about the content and it's about what I say, but it's also about feeling like it's 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 so from the heart that they can follow along and feel hope. Like they can feel excited because a lot of it is just as much perspective as it is the information. And some people- Mindset's everything, right? Yeah. And and a lot of people, you know, I'm going to have the haters that are going to be like, well, what are you really telling us? Because I'm not giving them exactly the stock to pick or exactly what to do. But that's not my job. My job is to lay it out, bring value and give people hope Like today's video is going to be based on people that are over 40 and are starting over. And that's an important, and that's an important one because a lot of people over 40 or 50 feel like it's too late to become successful. And so I I was real quick and just speak to that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So what I love about this and why I predict this video is going to do very well is because you're speaking to someone super specific. And so that person while you think, oh man, if I speak to this specific customer, this ideal viewer, then I'm going to limit myself. But the truth is that ideal viewer has other friends in their friend group and they go, oh, I needed to hear this. And they send it to their friends. When you speak to a specific person, there's other people specifically like them and they share that with their friend group. And I think shareability on the internet is everything so you're actually yep. sharing valuable information that helps people so they're going to share with their friends but also it's relatable yeah so if you remember i started out and i did uh what i would do for people in their 20s then i did 30s now i did 40s then i'm going to do 50s but i'm also going to go back to where i started and i'm going to say if i started all over what would i do starting all over yeah because i think that's that's key too because a lot of my audience is very young as well. And yeah. so a lot, of, a lot of them, if they don't have parents that are financially stable or, or even you know, wealthy parents that aren't teaching them, people just don't know where to go. I have so many people in my DMs and in my comments saying, I'm so tired of all the internet gurus because they just want to rip us off and sell us a $999 course. And a lot of times they don't feel they get value. So what I'm trying to do is bring value and speak to everyone, but in different videos. So not every video is going to be for everyone, but yeah. if I bring if I bring value to everyone over the course of a bunch of videos, then that's going to help people win, and that's all I care about. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, it all started with you giving this genuine advice, and I'm I can be the first to be the testimonial there's people who reach out to you every single day for the most basic and the most complicated financial advice day to day. I would see it like 20 times a day. And so I think sharing this with the world is, is what you're meant to do. And you are somebody who people can look at you and go, if he can do it, I can do it because you came from nothing and worked super hard to get where you're at. For those of you guys just joining Thank you for being here. It's the Personal Brand Power Hour. I'm Sophia Spolino. I am a social media strategist and personal brand builder for women. And this is my ex-boyfriend. You might know him, Robert Croak, who invented Silly Bands. And and he's here because we are still very close friends and uh, definitely go back and forth with ideas, bouncing ideas off of each other and staying in the crater landscape together. So our friendship is very, very much important to us. And without Robert, I wouldn't be where I am on TikTok. And without me, he wouldn't have been where he is on TikTok. We, we helped each right. other. We to, t- see- to touch on that one point, a uh, few of the comments. Yes, we are still great friends. We are not back together. That is not something that uh, 
you, you know where Sophia you know where Sophia is at in life. So we're, yeah, we're I'm a lesbian, guys. Total lesbian. Yeah, and and to touch on the other subject that you brought up, Sophia. Yeah, I get a lot of um, I get a lot of comments in, in my in the comment section of my DMs. So it's easy for me to spit this this game because I'm wealthy or all of these other things or that I grew up wealthy. And so I actually kind of like laid into a guy today and I was like, if you only knew where I came from in the poverty line growing up and what I went through to get where I am today, you might change your tone, your tone. But that's also part of why in all of my videos, I talk about mindset, because this is something that's very important to you and I, is that a positive mindset and an open mindset to learning is just so important because if you live your life with a victim mentality, you're never going to get anywhere. And so many people, especially in an economy like right now, where it's a tough time out there, they just want to point fingers at the successful people and say, oh, well, you got lucky or you have it made, not yeah. realizing that everyone has their struggles. So, so it's important for me, even for the haters, that I respond to them because if I can help change their mindset even a little that they might find that a lot of their problems are they're inflicting on themselves. 100%. And people don't like to say that, but I love to trigger people because when we're triggered, it helps us self-reflect and we make changes in our lives. It's all about the mindset. So let me just go through here and just read. Uh, Manifesting Mind says he loves your content, Robert. Uh, Peter Ross says he's been an investor for 16 years, around it for 27 years, and he can't stand what they, as in like the other creators are teaching, I'm assuming. Right. Um, so yeah, no, I definitely uh, think you're teaching it so well and you're reaching your audience through authenticity. No, this is not my ex-husband, ex-boyfriend. I had a very abusive ex-husband. This is a very wonderful ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and I just realized I was a lesbian, so we are not together anymore, but we are good friends. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so Robert, let's talk about how you just said, okay, I even laid into the haters today. They don't know my story. Let's dig into that. I think the quickest way to get people to trust you with uh, sharing your story authentically is one of the best ways, right? So, oh, let's go back to that comment in a moment. I see that. Um, so when you share your story on the internet, it is the quickest way to build credibility and trust because people want to buy from people or watch people they know. And when you create a video on TikTok, you need to think of that as a product now and people aren't going to buy into that and they're not going to follow you if they don't trust you and know how they can benefit from following you. By watching one of my videos, you know you're going to benefit from this type of education. By watching one of Robert's videos, you know how you are going to benefit and how he's going to add value to your life with financial tips. So Robert, um, talk about a little bit about your story, like briefly, like don't say the things that TikTok would not allow because he went through some brutal stuff as a kid. But just how you got from point A to yeah. point B. Yeah, I grew, up in, I grew up a typical broken home. You know, father left at six, mother left at 10. Um, you know, a very rough childhood. I was the first person in my family to um, graduate college, which was nice. Um, you know, and I've kind of always been an entrepreneur, even like around 14 years old. I got started with paper routes and repairing bicycles and stuff. So for me, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I find that some of the most successful people in my life, at least, had tough paths because you know what it's like. You, re you appreciate the greatness of life and the gift that life is. So for me, starting out where I did, uh, you know, I, I don't wear it as a badge of honor. It's just I'm glad that I am where I am today and that I can help others. But also, it just gives you so much experience and wisdom to be able to know what's right and wrong in life and, and try to lead by example. So I think that's, for me, the key. Yeah, I remember one time, like, when we first started dating, we were cuddling, you know, and I saw this scar on you, and you mm -hmm. had been hurt, like, a, we can't yep. say that on TikTok, but someone dug into his skin, essentially, as a kid for um money for bad things that people were addicted to and his own brothers had caused this people came and attacked him at what 15 years old to get money from you yeah i mean he's had it tough super tough so i i promise you if someone can can rise from the ashes um 
if he can do it, you can do it. And of course, when people say, oh, it's lucky, because people tell me that about you still to this day. I have people meet me and go, oh, your ex just got lucky. And I'm like, you know, he did. But it took throwing a lot of spaghetti at the wall strategically. And eventually one spaghetti stuck. And like, that's how I tell people about social media. Where I can't guarantee any sort of result if you work with me. But I will teach you how to throw the smartest spaghetti at the wall. And eventually one video will go viral. For you, it was like two lessons with me. And, and, and you already had your own thing going. You just applied some things and then it just went. So right. but some people, it could take like one lady I worked with her, it took two months for one to go viral. Um, well, one of, one of the key takeaways in life and in business and especially revolving around money is that you never, you really just can't quit. Because no. if, you li- if you listen to others and you don't follow your gut, um, you never know how close you are to that breakthrough moment. And that's, it's happened to me many times. You know, my biggest success was Silly Bands financially. And that was one that everyone on my team at the time in 2009 said it was a stupid idea. Wow. 2010, it, 2010, it became the biggest product success in the world. Uh, for the couple of years there. And now silly bands are very popular again. So the key takeaway is just to not, if your gut tells you you're on the right path and you feel it's there, you can't quit for what other people say because they're going to steer you wrong. I made two decisions Mm -hmm. in my life where I would have been a true billionaire if I would have said yes to both decisions. And both times I said no to to these projects I wanted to do because of what other people said. And so I always preach, you know, that you have to go with your gut. It's just so important. Mm, I love that. Go with your gut in business and like how you show up on the internet too. So right now there's people watching your success. Like, wow, Robert's getting millions of views right now. And they're trying to tell you to make your videos more professional. Um, They're like, can we work with you and make your videos like this way or that way? And at the end of the day, You don't need any of that, right? And like, I literally have someone with a social media agency and we work to make people's videos look authentic if that's what they want or polished, if that's what they want. And what's working for you and your audience is this major authentic vibe where you're huffing and puffing as you're talking. There's uh, the sound of the wind in the microphone, the text on uh, CapCut, you're not sure how to edit, even though I've told you. Up a very difficult mountain and it was snowing. <laughs> and these agencies are like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. You should not be huffing and puffing. And I'm like, are you sure? I got 10 million views. I'm pretty sure it's okay. So like, it's it's tricky, you know, and right now, you know, obviously this this type of format that I'm doing is really resonating with people because I think it just comes off as it should is just me telling a story. And that's what I, I'm trying to do. I love it. Um, I love hold on. It. Linda Vaughn, he's not the animal band bracelet man. Uh, just just Google Silly Band's founder and my face will show up. It's okay. Um, <laughs> yes. It's so funny that people still question that. I wanted to say something like, if if you want to start making content, but you're afraid because you don't know how to make it look professional yet, just start. Robert's success is literal proof that you can just walk and hold the camera. And if you have something to share... And that you're coming from your heart, people will listen. I have a mantra that I say everyone knows um, on social equity. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. Galactic Mastery Con Man. Okay, sure. Thank you, Galactic. Con artist now. Okay, what else? Thank you. No. Um, Google what silly bands earned and you will see he's legitimate. It's Um, okay, Galactic. You're, you're, You're still good in my book, man. Or woman, whoever you are. They always hide behind some crazy name. Okay, so what you don't believe you can manage, you can't manifest. I say that so often on my podcast. I heard my friend Emma say it one time, and I was like, I'm running with that. What you don't believe you can manage, you can't manifest. So if you're afraid and you're like, I have this big goal, and you don't know how to manage it, you'll never manifest it. Or you're like, my content has to look perfect. Well, you're not going to manifest it. You're not going to be able to go out there and create it. You're not going to be able to go out there and make it happen. So just get started. Just start posting your face and relating to people. Uh, let's see. L. David says he invested in his first index fund. Thanks to you, Robert. Yes, let's good. Three. DM me if you have any questions. Aw, 
Okay, Kat says she loves seeing us together. This is her ex, guys. It's all right. They are friends. That's so sweet. Um, okay, wait, there's more. Are you here because you met him in my live? What do you think I'm in here for? Oh, people are talking about you. Okay, wait, they aren't together anymore. Okay, Lafayette, Louisiana people in here. Didn't you guys date? Okay, how many more? Actually, look, they're saying they love that you're working out when you record your videos. And it feels good. like you're on FaceTime. I love that. That's such a good, that's such a, a, a good observation. So what about feeling like you're on FaceTime, I think is working, is there's this thing right now that's going viral. You guys might have heard about it. It's called the Gen Z Shake. Have you seen this, Robert? The what is it? The Gen Z Shake. Mm -mm. It's a little phenomenon that the social media strategist world is investigating. And what happens is, Gen Z content creators open their videos with like a shake. Like they didn't mean like, Hey guys, or like right. so natural, like, but you know, they put in to shake it. And so there's someone who does this very well. I love watching Marin's account. The girl I followed you guys. I was jealous. I'm a big fan of her. She does astrology and all of her videos start with like her camera pointing at the floor, but we know that's how her videos start. And we like it. You do something that your audience, they, they start to see what they can, predict your videos will look like it's comforting. It's almost like, look, my cool uncle's calling me to give me financial advice. And maybe that FaceTime appeal is what's working for you. What do you think, Robert? Yeah, I think it probably is, but it's also just because it's different. It's different from everybody else, but it's familiar to everyone following me. And there's been, like I looked at one of the videos the other day and, and I couldn't even believe the amount of uh, saves and the amount of shares. The video was saved something like 799,000 times, wow. you know, yeah, almost a million times. And then the shares were in the hundreds of thousands. Okay. And so guys, let's, let's analyze that. What does that mean as a social media strategist? I love to look at saves and shares because those are indicators of like what you did right in the video or what you did wrong. So the fact this video was saved so many times means people thought it was valuable enough to come back to it later. Like they needed to remember this tip and the share means they thought it was important enough to send to a friend. This yep. is the type of content you have to make before you create it. Ask yourself, would someone else come back to this to find value and knowledge or would they share this with a friend because it's so funny or so relatable or so helpful? Well, I think again, it goes back to the reason I'm here tonight for you and the, the message for this live is authenticity. Um, when people come across me, they don't even have to know that I'm the silly bands guy or anything about me, but when they hear a, a voice that, that sounds sure and, and knows what he's talking about, people need that and want that, especially if they're just getting started in their business or financial journey. I've built dozens and dozens of companies over the last 30 years. I've made every mistake there is. I've made millions and lost millions and you know the story. And so I think that I just struck a chord with this genuine feel that makes people feel comfortable. And that's why I tell everybody, just go through with a notepad, go through my videos, take notes and execute on those notes. And in five years, come back and thank me because, you know, there's nothing behind the curtain. I've been doing this for my whole life. And, uh, and so I, I think that I can bring real value, you know, because there's a lot of charlatans out there that did drop shipping for a year and then start losing money. So guess what? They start selling a drop shipping course. There's mm -hmm. other people that have had many failed businesses that are out there with subscription agreements, you know, where they're charging people $499 a month to bring them any value. And I just don't want to be part of that. I want to do a subscription agreement coming up soon for myself, just because I want to create a private community where people can have access to me on a daily basis because you know, going live on my account is just impossible to get to everybody. Same as in my DMs. I spend hours a day trying to respond to everybody. He really but, does. Yeah, but with this private community, it's going to give people real access to me. So we're working on that as well. But it's I'm all working about on one too. I'm so excited. It's just all about value because if I can help, you know, if I can help a few people a day change the trajectory of their business and financial lives, then it's a win-win for both of for both of us. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. Um, you know, I'll keep you guys posted on when I'm going to launch the private community. 
yeah. um, because I'm really, really excited about it. So people can have direct ask, access to me every day. Cause you know, right now the sad truth is, is that hundreds of people ask me, Hey, can you jump on a co- phone call? And I just can't do that right now because I don't have the mechanism to be able to do it. Yeah, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm really that. excited about that, but, but, but it really comes down to just bringing authentic value. If you know what you're doing, then it helps. Like the other day I was in a client meeting with a very large brand and they were like, well, what makes, what makes you guys any good at TikTok?" And it was kind of funny. So I just showed them my personal account and I was like, well, I've grown something like 800,000% in the last month. I think, I think we know a little bit about what to do here. Not to mention the Silly Bands account. That's right. So they looked at the Silly Silly Bands account and my personal account and they were sold because obviously we know a little something about We we know a little bit about social media marketing. So guys, just so you know, welcome to the Personal Brand Power Hour. If you're new here, I'm Sophia Spino. I host Social Equity, the podcast. This is my ex-boyfriend, Robert. I only quit dating him because I realized I was a lesbian, but we're still great friends. I know it's a lot to catch up on. He created Silly Bands. And um, we built the Silly Bands TikTok together. He is a uh, financial, not advisor. He's, he gives amazing tips online when it comes to how to grow your wealth. And Robert's business is building brands, social media. And my business is building personal brands, social media. We don't have a company together, but we love bouncing ideas off of each other and supporting each other in our lives. Okay, when you said, you said like, I tell people to take action. I give them the plan at the end of the video. I wanna talk about that. I think think how you structure your videos is magical. So let's just dive in as a social media strategist. I wanna give people some tips to do this for themselves and apply it to their own niche. Is that cool if we do that? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So Robert's videos start with, how do you start it? Uh, I generally s- start with an intro on the subject because that's okay. the key. So the opening hook is the subject of the bi- video. Okay. So like one of them that currently has like 18 million views, I start off by s- saying, um, do you want to be the first millionaire in your family? Okay, and pause. So then, yep. That is a super shocking question like that's a big promise like if they keep watching this video they're gonna get the the knowledge to do that so that's like shocking it's asking a question it's also a short question right because you've got like 0.2 seconds to capture someone before they scroll continue on yep then and got then, the what do, video. then what i do um is here are my top three tips and what I, why I do three and I don't go super long form, but I don't go too short is I want to make it long enough that the people that are serious about actually learning and taking action, they'll watch all the way through. And the people that are going to bounce, I want to be able to give them value because a lot of those people bounce at around 20 to 25 seconds. So I can get in one or two of those tips in the first 20 to 25 seconds, the people that are serious that really want to make a change and really want to learn, they're going to stop and watch the whole thing. So that's why I break it down into three bite-sized tips. And then I have a closing statement in every video to, that is the motivational and the perspective of the video, the perspective part, because it's not just all about tips. It's about mm-hmm. giving people perspective to nudge them because so many people are like, well, having money is not for me. Getting wealthy is not for me. That's bullshit. Right now, we live in the easiest time in the history of mankind to get rich. We really do. I, I mean, I always, I always tell the story that when I created my first big online store, um, this was in 2003, to build a shopping cart to house your products back then was fifteen or $20,000. Now you can launch an entire website for $100. So when people in my comments or DMs say, oh, well, you got lucky or this happened or that happened, it's ridiculous because you can have an idea right now and bring it to market for like $200. Yeah. And that's just crazy, beautiful, insane. And so if I have the time, and maybe I'll do this, I want to maybe have two teams 
that help me with the comments and the content for the private community and the public community to where the people that are the haters and the naysayers that are trying to hurt me in my DMs and my comments, I actually want to spend more time on them because they need the help. They need the help more. Mm -hmm. And even though they're trying to hurt me, if I can change some of their minds and show them that everything is possible, then, then that would be incredible for me. Are you planning? Because right now what you have going is so good. I'm not telling you to change it. I'm just asking for the future. Are you planning on starting to incorporate less structured video? Because right now you've got the structure. You've got your hook intro with your shocking question that ultimately gives people. This is the bit, biggest takeaway from this. His shocking question gives people a potential outcome if they watch the video. So write that down right now. Shocking question that ask about a like dream outcome. Okay. He's hitting them both in one question. Would you like to learn this? How to do this? Then he gives the two to three tips. Then he closes with the take action, but the take action is something heartfelt. It's like, here's the plan. How do you say it? Um, I, can, I say, okay, here's the plan. Let's go. And yeah, because it's like you're, it. I love it. Because you, I, because I want to cap each video off because, again, I could go in and do super granular videos of here are the three things I would invest in today. And if I got super granular with it and showed the graphs and the websites and all that, people would just go right past because they would feel it's too over their head. So what I'm doing is creating these videos that provide hope, information and perspective those three things will get people to slow down for one damn second and just learn because that's the key so many people go online and just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll they don't ever stop and learn yeah. but if you can get them to stop and learn which right now i've been able to get people to stop and learn that is the ultimate key and value for me because down the road a year two three we're not going to be in this bad economy. Stock markets are going to be up. Index funds are going to be up. Crypto is going to be up. The housing market's going to stabilize. And, and getting back into real estate on a more full-time level is going to be a better strategy. All of those things are going to come into play soon. And people are going to look back and remember the moment that they watched one of my videos mm -hmm. and it got them to start. It oh, my got gosh. Them this is it. So what you're feeling inside is like you're living your purpose. Your, your yeah. purpose is being lived through your content. When you're showing up, people can feel that energy. So guys, listen, whatever you feel you have to share, I don't care if you don't believe in God, I believe in God, whatever you call it, universe, whatever, like you were put on this planet for a reason. And if you show up in your content, like I am here to share this, and like, this is my purpose and what I do in my business is so important and how I help people is so important and how I impact people and communicate. Like the people in here, I don't know if you read Robert, but someone says he always answers my DMs. And that's just like, that is what matters. How we impact people, leaving them better than we found them, leaving them better than your video found them. That's you living your purpose and you're so inspired. And when you're inspired, like divinely inspired, those creative ideas are just going to keep coming to you. Yeah, and it is because it feels so natural to want to do it. And yeah. it's funny because some of the larger influencers on this platform and Instagram that I've been talking to about my strategy to do this really affordable community, they said, you're nuts. They're like, oh, this person charges $499 a month and this, this guy charges $399 a month. And I was like, nope, not for me. And they're like, why do you respond? Because I literally right now, and you know this, I literally respond to three to 400 DMs a day right now, personally. I don't have an assistant. It's me. And so, you know, it's just one of those things where it just feels good to me because like people will say to me, I just opened my TD Ameritrade account. I'm so excited. I'm putting $1,000 in tomorrow. And like, that is amazing because so many people, I think the biggest breakdown in modern financial literacy is that all of the gurus and everyone out there makes it sound like you need to have 30, 40, $50,000 to start investing. And it's mm -hmm. so crazy. You can literally start with $20. And I think the key takeaway for every message I'm going to push to people for as long as they'll listen to me is start early, start often, and just get 
your mind thinking investing instead of spending. If I people can it. change from being consumers to investors, then I've won. Oh, I love okay, it. someone just said, you got me started. I made a plan. I'm doing it. I started investing with only $25. Exactly. I love yeah, exactly. it. I love it. Ex yeah. It's oh just like, with, it's just like, it's just like with real estate. People are like, well, real estate is a rich person game. I can't get into real estate. You can literally right now at this moment in five minutes, go open the Fundrise account and you can start, I think Fundrise starts at 10 or $25 and you can invest in one of their projects. Now, wow. are you going to get rich from that? No, but if you keep adding in and investing more and more, the whole goal here is to get people to understand you can invest with small amounts of money and let compounding do the rest. Yeah. And over time, that's the key is time. The younger people that are listening to me and you that listen and actually take action in 10, 20, 30 years, they're going to be astounded by how much money they have because they started early and they put that little bit of money in every month, no matter what they can put in. It could be $25. It could be $1,000 a month. It yeah. depends on what you're making. But it's just so important. Yeah. And, and also for the people who are older listening, it's never too hold, hold, late. Hold on one sec. Hold on one second. Galactic. Why is no one making money in real estate? Again, you got to get your facts straight. That is absolutely incorrect. No, people are making tons of money in real estate right now. So, Galac so Galactic, if you're here just to be a, you know, a Debbie Downer, maybe go somewhere else because, you know, we're here to try and have a good time and, and provide value. And we're not selling real estate. We're just talking positively here. That's right. <laughs> okay, Darren Monroe official sent a cap. I'm not sure what that means, but that's really sweet. They sent us caps. Um, Brandy says dynamic duo packing. We've got uh, another cap from Darren. Okay, this is another hater. K Blitz says there's someone in an office pressing a heater button. It's not about content. Okay. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Again, I don't mind. I don't mind negative people. I don't mind the naysayers. We just have to move on because, you know, 95, 97% of the people here or commenting on my stuff or your stuff are positive people that yeah. want to learn when they can. So if someone thinks that I got lucky on TikTok, just like I got lucky with silly bands and just like I got lucky with Livestrong bracelets, then I guess I'm just the luckiest guy alive and good for me. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think people April, can keep that, and I do believe book, that the heater. Wait, 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 one second. Our books about money, useful and worth reading. Yes, DM me, and I'll tell you my top five books that I think you should read, especially if you're a beginner. Robbie, how I do I feel about teachers. investing in crypto? Crypto has uh, had a nice rise again lately. I think there's still a ways to go in crypto winter, um, but but I definitely would put five percent of my net disposable income into crypto. Still, still yes. Yeah, we're not arguing that there's proof there's a heater button, uh, Kibitz music. Um, but yeah, it's okay. Whatever you want no, to believe no, is No, I personally, as a strategist, totally believe in the heater button. Do I yep. think you got heated? Absolutely not. Um, I've had some issues like on TikTok in the past. We have no preferential treatment for TikTok and Instagram. I mean, even right now, you're still not verified yet, are you? No, I'm not. Exactly. Like we don't know people at TikTok and Instagram. We're not getting any special treatment. Um, um, that La, that La, London, 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 um, just watch some of my videos and then DM me if you have any questions, because if you watch the last 10 videos, it spells a lot of that out and yeah. then ask me, ask away. Oh, uh, okay. My friend Alex says she never heard of investing until Robert. Now she is to raise her three boys investing. That's beautiful. I love I love the idea. Hold on, let me go back. I want and Alex to has been up. one of my clients. I, I'm so grateful, Alex. Thank you. Giggy, Gigi. Um, yes, microgreens uh, do very well. I have a couple friends that invest in microgreen businesses. Um, so DM me where you're doing it and what your experience level is, and maybe I can help. Oh yeah. Okay, let's see. So how do we start invest? We've got ooh. watch watch my videos and um, and then DM me with any questions. I also want to speak to that. They said if you're older, so I help women build personal brands at any age. I specifically all, all my clients right now are uh, over 30, most of them in their 50s. And it's so fun to help women actually learn how to build a beautiful personal brand through authenticity 
on social media and learn how to take payments, uh, being a coach in whatever they felt their life experience got them to where they are. Maybe they live their lives like working for a corporation, not doing what they love and their passion comes out in their videos. And like, Robert, that's what makes you successful when you feel like you're sharing with the world what you're meant to share. I love right. working with older people. I absolutely love it. I like there's no no too late at all. Hey hey Sophia, can you block Galactic so we can uh not have everybody have to deal with this bullshit? You have to block it on your end. Yeah, thanks. See ya see ya Galactic. I'm sorry you're down on your luck, buddy. It's rough. Would... Okay, so someone's saying crypto is not a scam. You just have to be wise. Absolutely. So the way I see crypto, so I learned from Robert. I I definitely invested over the past three years while I was with him. What I learned to do is if I couldn't afford to not think about it or not or lose it, I wouldn't invest it. And I took maybe 10% of what I was earning at the time and put it in. But I was also in a place when I was with you where I didn't have to add all disposable income. So totally different situation. Now I'm a little bit more careful with how I invest and also haven't really invested crypto this year. What would you say is the wisest strategy for crypto? Do you long, like, I only think long-term I don't trade in daily. Or yeah. Day. Yeah. I don't, I don't recommend, especially in this, uh, in this market right now to be trading crypto on a daily basis, unless you're going to really immerse yourself in it fully. Um, but as a passive income strategy, I would say don't invest more than 5% of your, net income or savings that you're investing with into crypto. But yeah. I definitely think it's a good time if you're just starting out to get into crypto. Crypto is definitely not a scam. There are scams in crypto like there is in any equity situation that, have, that revolves around money since the beginning of time. There's always going to be bad seeds in every category. Um, but crypto is not a scam. It is here to stay uh, the, the brightest and most wealthiest you know, hedge funds and investors in the world are in banks and governments are investing in crypto. So it's a very far fetched statement to say crypto as a whole is a scam. You just have to be careful and invest in the projects and just follow the money. If you invest in the good projects with the good teams that have a use case, you're going to win in crypto, especially if you're going to be in it for the long haul, like five to 10 years. And I just want to point something out. You guys are asking really good questions, really specific questions, really hard questions. And you feel safe to do that with Robert because his videos build credibility. His videos tell you, I care about you. The way he responds to the comments tell you, I care about you. If you can take this entire call today or live today and implement this in how you show up in your personal brand, you will be more successful than you were yesterday. Because all me, Robert does is show up and answer questions that people want to know. Yeah, let me talk to this a little bit. Um, thank you, um, uh, Bisney Adaya. People are buying real estate with crypto. Yeah, what do you think about stocks? Um, if you're starting out, I would never recommend buying individual stocks unless you have two or three or four specific companies that you love. I did a video about that the other day. You guys should watch it. And what I said in the video was, instead of just buying a company's products like Nike, Apple, or Starbucks, what the challenge was for people, and I hope people follow this, is if you feel the need to be a consumer, let's say you're going to go buy a $150 pair of Nike Air Maxes or whatever you're going to buy, I want you to then match that with $150 in Nike stock. Same thing with, with Starbucks or the same thing with Apple. Instead of just buying their products, think about buying their products, but also buying their stock, because then you feel even better once your mindset shifts that, hey, I'm buying this pair of shoes, but I'm an owner of Nike stock as well, because the key takeaway to build wealth is stop thinking like a consumer and think like an investor. But we all like cool shit. So if you like cool shit, but you also want to build wealth, then break it down the middle, invest in the companies that you love. But if you're just starting out and you want to play it safe, then I always tell everyone, just like Warren Buffett tells everyone, is to buy index funds. Start out with S&P 500 index funds. You literally can Google what are the top per performing S&P 500 um, index funds for 2023 and pick from that list. This that is list not is, financial advice. This is yeah, just that list, what that he list, does. 
that list is for everyone to see and share and you can look at it and learn from it. But that is the easiest way to invest in the stock market without individually picking stocks yourself. So and good. thank so you. Good. Thank you, Wally. My videos. Thank you. Okay. Someone's question. Let's talk about this. Is the majority of your viewers slash audience Mel Robert? Um, my audience on TikTok is uh, 55 percent, 55 or 60 percent women and 40 percent men. I love it. I love that it's a split. Now, partially that could be because of our relationship that, you know, but now yeah, at this point, I don't think it really matters because you've just grown about 500,000 followers. Uh, a little more, a little more than that, but yes. Where are you um, at now? I'm at almost 700. Woo! Yeah, it's crazy. I love it. So, okay, yeah. guys, so let's, let's talk about a little bit of strategy before we end the power hour. Where were you before you started this new form of content? Where were you sitting at and following? 70,000 followers. Okay. And then we did two lessons. I'm going to self-promote here. <laughs> you did two lessons with me. And don't even, don't even. He still sends me his scripts, y'all. Okay. And I love it. I love it. But guess what? Before I do anything, I send it to him. Before I sign any contract, I send it to him. And before I invest in anything, I go to him and I ask him, Robert, does this look good? So at the end of the day, he started this new style of video. He's walking and talking. I'm like, okay, here's the tips. I'm going to give some of you guys some of the tips that I gave him. The first tip is do not let a clip of a video be longer than seven seconds. That is just the rule of thumb now. Any video you do, don't let it be more than seven seconds. It, walking and talking videos are simply going to perform amazing compared to others. But the reason for this is, is that shake. Right now, when people recognize shake on a camera, it, it relaxes us. It makes us feel like we're on FaceTime. It makes it feel more authentic. We don't even notice it's happening, but we immediately trust that person more. And he didn't even mean to do this, but that's what walking and talking does. The next thing that he did is he packed in two to three tips. He doesn't make his videos long and he ends with something that is commonly said at the end of all of his videos and that people can learn to expect. And he's showing up just so natural every day walking around. So take the notes, apply it to your videos. Also, he's not having one take. It's multiple takes. Like I said, the seven seconds, some clips are closer to his face. Some clips are further away from his face really making it clear that these are different clips rather than just holding the phone in one place, pausing and continuing on. I hope this is making sense. If you apply this to whatever you're doing in your niche, you're going to have more success than you had yesterday. Anything else, Robbie? Um, yeah, I wanted to answer some of those questions. Let me back yeah. up a little bit. Yes, we use chat GPT. Um, it's good for, you know, various, um, hold on. It's good for various ideas and concepts if you need help with some copywriting. Just always remember with ChatGPT, none of the information is after 2020 because it has to catch up. So there's a two year lag. So anything you're trying to get from ChatGPT chat from a uh, information or statistic is gonna be lag. So be careful using it there because two years old is, is a long time ago for information that might be important to what you're writing about. Also, um, do you think of, do you, what do you think about Amazon FBA from that London? Amazon FBA is really good as long as you have enough profit margin in what you're selling to be able to use Amazon FBA. We don't use it because I have my own warehousing, but I know a lot of people that do and it's very successful as long as you have a good product. Um, no, you don't have to be employed to start your brokerage account. Um, what can I DM you through? Um, you can DM me here or at Robert Croak on Instagram. No, so Robbie, on here, you can't see them if you're, they're not friends with you. Oh, That's you have the to follow That's the problem they're running yeah. into. Oh, got you. Okay. Uh, the other thing is too, how do you all amicably end your relationship and still remain friends? Um, it's, it's just a, res a, 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 you know, a respect for each other that, you know, Agreed. sometimes relationships don't work out for various reasons. And we had a none very of the reasons, good reason. Yeah, she had a very good reason and it wasn't anything nefarious. So for me, it's, it's totally great having someone that I respect and care for in my life, even though it's no longer romantic. 
And yeah. that's fine because we bring a lot of value for each other and we enjoy talking to each other because we have very like-minded goals and compatibility in life. So that's important. Um, what else? If I were straight, we would probably be together. Linda, I am left-handed. Um, he explains his videos, go watch them over and over like I did and you will learn. Perfect. Yes. Um, okay, so good. People were saying they were sad when we broke up, but okay. Last question. Someone says they're 15 years old. What can they do to start making money now? I'm going to go first. The first thing you need to be doing is building a personal brand that you are proud of for years to come. Start whatever you post on social media. Be sure that you're posting about something that you are passionate about sharing and educating your audience on. Because if you're an expert, say you're a quilter, but you're posting really niche quilting videos, you're going to build an audience around that. And one day you could build a business around that. Bad example, but you get what I'm saying here. Whatever you love, create about that and don't stop. Just don't stop. Keep creating. And if you want more tips, listen to my podcast, Social Equity. The link's in the bio. Get your mindset right. Make sure that you believe you can and you will make money. And there's nothing that will stop you. Because if you have that attitude, you can literally move to a different state, start your whole life over, begin again like I did at 30, and still make a lot of money really fast. Go on, Robert. Um, I would say, was it 15 years old? Yeah, 15 years old. I would say at 15 years old, the best way to make money if you're not into computers and you're not into anything like blockchain development or gaming or any of that, the old school and easiest way to make money is in the flip economy. You know, mm -hmm. going online, Facebook marketplace, Craigslist, estate sales, garage sales, and flipping. I still... And, you know, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk kind of stole my thunder on that a few years ago, so I don't talk about it, but I still flip things. Um, yes, I flip he does. Lo I, it I drove me nuts when we were together. I flip luxury um, vintage watches, and I enjoy it, and other kind of hard-to-find collectibles, and I really love that. I enjoy it. I don't do it as much as I used to, but uh, the flip economy is great for someone young because you have the time. There's garage sales everywhere. There's estate sales everywhere. You can go to estatesales.net. You can see everything that it, that's at the estate sale. You can research it ahead of time and then go to the estate sale before it opens, get in the front of the line so you can get to the items you want before everyone else. And you can really make a lot of money that way. So there's a lot of ways in the flip economy to make money. Um, and that's probably the easiest. I love that. So helpful. Someone says it will be very awkward for your future girlfriends. Only if they're extremely insecure and think that lesbians still like male things. Hey, uh, the, the London, um, like I said in my videos, go watch my videos. Um, you can start with 50 bucks. You can start with $100. Yes. The key is, is to understand, go Everyone on here right now that's interested in learning the best thing about investing is just type into a, any search engine, what does compound interest do or what does compound interest mean? Research that because the key is getting money in every week, every month, even if it's a little bit because it immediately starts compounding through the investment vehicle that you're in. Um, and as long as that vehicle is making money and historically index funds make 8% a year, um, that money is going to compound year over year and continue to compound. And that's the key. Awesome. Well, thank you for your offer. advice today, Robert. I just want to do a little recap for everybody watching. Thank you for being here on the personal brand power hour. I'm Sophia Spino. This is Robert Croak. He was my ex-boyfriend and we've just been answering questions here, him when it comes to financial tips me when it comes to building your personal brand. Um, if you enjoyed this, you'll love to go follow him. Go give him a follow. You're going to get some financial tips. You guys probably already follow him. Half the world is, or will be. But if, but if you haven't yet, go give him a follow. And I just want to analyze why you're where you're at. Is because you are serving people before you attempt to sell to them. And I love that. I think it's beautiful. I think people find that super authentic. I love that you're coming as showing up as a leader, but also being super raw in your videos. That's what's 
performing well. So those of you listening who are thinking, I need to put my face out there on the internet. I need to start building a personal brand. The biggest takeaway from this is to show up authentically you. Don't wait till you have a perfect studio to start. Definitely walk and talk while you make your videos and definitely give value to your audience before you even attempt to sell. Wait, I missed up something? Well, I don't want the whole world walking and talking in their videos because it won't make me unique. Oh, well, that was something that I was doing for a while. I mean, I do that in my ads. So for those of you who don't know, I strategize for brands. So I do walk and talk in those ad videos. So that's how I got that <laughs> for you because it's what's performing well, I know. But yeah, right. very true, very true. The thing be is- authentic, Be authentic to yourself. Don't copy other people's style. Very true. So, I mean, your style could be so different. Like I said, Marin's video is open with her camera showing the floor. There's going to be something that's authentically you. Jump on that. Be yourself. Uh, the biggest takeaway also here is no matter what Robert does in life, because he's building social equity and a personal brand and an audience that trusts him, he will then be able to go and serve that audience in any capacity he wants to. So if he wants to shift into real estate advice, crypto, I mean, it doesn't matter. Not that he is, but he can because he's built social equity for himself. If you want to learn more about building social equity or building a personal brand, please follow me. There's links in my bio to work with me. I help women specifically build their personal brands so they can make money online or if they're already making money online, take some of the things that they don't like doing in their business and me and my team will do it for them. I coach women in starting an online business from zero to 100, specifically in the coaching industry. And I would love to work with you. If you're curious, you can work with me. I do social media audits and I give lessons like I had given Robert that help you make viral videos because there are some things that if you put them together, you have a chance at magic. And of course, the algorithm takes luck, but if you're doing it the right way, you, you, it's almost like gambling, right? You're investing a little more money in, into thank, the game. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, Edna, where do you find flipping information? Um, Facebook marketplace, Craigslist, estate sales.net is a good one. If you want to go to estate sales, Oh yeah. You but it, I would just Google garage sale sites. Um, you know, there's Facebook groups in every neighborhood where the garage sales are. There's a lot of it. I use tips and tricks you had on your podcast. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Nice Thank work. you so much, nice. Moxie. Moxie. If, if you want more tips and tricks, listen to the social equity podcast. My podcast shifted. It's still there though. The link is in the bio. Zeph says she would like an audit. Um, I would love to give you an audit. The, the link to get a social media audit for me is in the bio. I'll specifically look at your TikTok or your Instagram when you book that uh, audit, or you could actually book a one-on-one -on -one call. We can go over both together face-to-face -to -face on Zoom. I would love to work with you. Sometimes it's as simple as doing one little tweak. The one little tweak me and Robert did, all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. I'm not taking credit for his success, but I'm telling you that if you take the tips that I give you and you do them, magic can happen. He was at 50,000 followers and now he's at how much? I don't know. I'd have to look. Like 800,000 followers. He's gotten over No, it's, it's, it's not. It's like 675 or 600. Okay, 000. 675. In a week, you'll be at 800. My bad. Um, you have gotten how many million views in the past month? There is no Telegram. That is a fake account. So yeah, no Telegram. If you get something from Telegram, it's fake. It's not me. Oh yeah. If you get him like following you or asking for money or me, people make me. fake accounts of us and do that all the time. We do not solicit business from people. People come to us because we have social equity and personal brands and they ask to work with us. We will never ask to work with you. Follow um, me and get follow me and get free value. I'm not here yes. to sell you anything. Someone says garage case. Can you type it? I didn't write it. Were they talking about your flip thing, Robert? Oh, uh, maybe estatesales.net. Okay. That might be How it. can I get in touch with you, Robert? DM me on Instagram um, at Robert Croak. Oh, did we go to college? That's a good question. Can I go first? Yeah, so we both we both graduated. Yeah, but I think it was a total waste. So I had momentum on YouTube with 7,000 followers back in the day, which was pretty darn good, like being a little kid on YouTube. And I was a viral harpist at the time. And instead, I went to college, lost that momentum, and then had to start building social equity all over again. Highly don't recommend college unless you want to be a doctor, lawyer, or nurse. 
Otherwise, go get a meta certificate, watch educators, take master class, invest in coaches like me, <laughs> invest in other coaches for your industry, learn from someone and just don't give up. Start a business. And yes, Texas, I need a haircut. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, I, I I've been it. a little, I've been a little busy. Um, 32 with two kids under three, where can I get started in developing my personal brand? I love it. You figure out it, your, Bobby. figure out what your niche is and what you love. I see there is something in the name about Russian river Frenchies. I'm sure the Frenchies market is big enough out there that you could do all your content around Frenchies and you would still crush it because you have a specific niche um love that too but you are thinking like product wise like for dogs i'm saying for personal brand start showing your face i would go the opposite way i would say remove the dogs i would say actually create a social media handle with your name because one day you will be wealthy and you will be googleable and people need to know your name unless you want to build a brand and then you can talk to robert about that but as far as personal brand start showing up showing your face every single day on social media. And I don't know what you're selling or what you want to sell, whether that's a service or a product, but using your face to sell every day is important. I think people are afraid to get on there every day. You have to remember Starbucks, Target, um, McDonald's, everything you can think of, every business you think of, big business, they sell every single day and they're not afraid. I get on my social media every single day and show my face. I think that's the first step. The second step is going to be figuring out what you're most passionate about. And then how can you use that passion to help other people? Yes. Uh, BYP pressure. How did I get started after college? I was investing uh, long before I graduated from college. I started out just like I tell you guys uh, with a broker account, a personal broker account. And at that time I was putting away like $20, every two weeks from my paycheck because I was trying to get enough money together to buy my first property by the time I graduated college. And so I was just putting that money in 20, 30, 40, $50 every paycheck. Um, and that ended up getting me enough money to buy my first fourplex was my first property. Um, and so I used that money all as the down payment to buy that fourplex. I love to hear it. I love to hear it. And he still does it every day. He's always looking for duplexes and fourplexes. Um, for those of you asking specifically Russian River Frenchies, um, this is water, sparkling water and uh, raspberries. I try not to drink like every night or, or ever drink by myself. I'm very focused on my business and growing that. And I feel like lack of alcohol gives me clarity. Um, let's see. Also, Russian River Frenchie says she agrees with me. Yes, but she's afraid to get out there to show her face, but she will... Awesome. I love to see it. Shoot me a DM on Instagram and I would love to support you in your content, like what you're putting out there. Um, let's see what else. What about patents? I specific um, watch Brandy says. Great. If you're sure that the product has legs because patents take a very long time to actually get initiated. So if you're going to create a product, um, maybe we can get an NDA in place and I can take a look at it. Um, but the, the key takeaway is patents take sometimes two, three years to get initiated. So you need to make sure your product has long legs and profitability opportunities. Otherwise, the patent's not going to be worth anything. By the time it's even um, specific, wow. product, specific product creation launch. That's a broad question. DM me and I'll do what I can to help in DMs. Um, real estate is most what you do. No, real estate is not most I do. Mostly what I do is angel invest, create brands or invest in brands that I believe in the founders and the product. And then I do some real estate and then equities and crypto. So no, I don't do mostly real estate. Does Robert Yay, do the reunion we needed. What's that? Does Robert do mentoring. We both do mentoring. So I focus on helping you build your personal brand. And Robert, if there's anything that he's talked about here and you want mentoring in that, he helps the links in his bio to book a call with him. And same for me. You can book a social media audit with me and you can actually book a coaching call. I offer VIP uh, a whole month with me, working every day, personal access to me to build your personal brand, to help you with content creation and strategy. The best way to work with Robert right now is going to be 
probably reaching out in a DM and he'll send you a booking link. He can't help everybody for free, but he will answer your DM and send you a booking link. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do my best. But like I said, um, I'm going to be launching a private community very soon. And then that way people will be able to ask me questions and get directly to me. Um, we will have private uh, live um, streams, live streams, a recap, and then a, a monthly download newsletter that'll have everything that my thoughts, the markets and everything we're working on. Um, but that'll be coming soon. But for right now, just DM me and I'll do my best to help where I can. Uh, Cal says, if we DM, do you respond saying to text or WhatsApp? No, there's so many fake accounts of both of us. Never. And we will never DM you. And if you get a response like that, you're DMing the wrong account. Like you're DMing a fake account. Yeah, just, re just read the handles carefully because right now there's over 50 fake accounts of me out there trying to DM people for money and saying they'll coach you. It's not me. Obviously, I'm not going to DM, any, DM anyone for money. Um, so if you can, just help both of us. And when you get one of these DMs asking you something, just block them and report them because that'll help. And it's really embarrassing to think that, that there's people in my life that I know in real life who go, oh, I was going to send you that $50. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I would never DM someone for 50. Like, that's embarrassing to, as a coach, send someone a message and ask for business. Like, part of what I teach is how people come to you and they, they want help from you because you lead as an expert on the internet. We will never reach out to you with that. So right. the official um, account my, for Robert is what on TikTok and what on Instagram? It is at Robert Croak official on TikTok and at Robert Croak on Instagram. And for me, it's Sophia Spolino on both. What they like to do, the fake accounts will just put an extra I or L in my name. Yeah, I will um, never ask you to I will never ask you to hit me to hit me up on WhatsApp and I will never ask you for money. So thanks you guys for reporting because that helps. I can't find the flipping information. Can you type the website in the chat? Um, I, all I said for flipping was Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and estatesales.net. Estatesales.net. Maybe you're typing .com. Yeah, easy to find. He doesn't Thank work with any of those, by the way. That's genuinely what I would see this man doing when we were dating. I'd wake up with my coffee, go into your office. I'd be like, you're flipping things again? Yep. This Saturday morning, like pleasure. He just loves to go to a state sales. We really have does, fun does, together. An, does Andrew Tate give good financial advice? Um, yeah, I think so. I think Andrew Tate, you know, obviously he's very divisive. Yes, estatesales.net. He's very dis divisive for a reason, and that's to grow and be one of the most searched people on earth, which he is. Um, but, but I think he has very sound advice when it comes to financial stuff. It's a little gregarious for me because the average person, you know, he shows the Lambos and all the stuff to like hype everybody up and that works. But yeah, I think some of his information is really good. Yeah, I can't agree to that. I, I, I think he's like very harmful to the world, but I will say that as a social media strategist, being divisive is one of the quickest ways to grow. So I it encourage is. you when you think about your hooks, say something that, well, you might not want to hear this or unpopular opinion. Start with that, lead with that, because that's going to actually attract people who want to argue and attract people who agree with you. What's going to happen is the people who agree with you are going to see you and like, I relate to her. And then the people who disagree with you, they're going to start a war in the comments, which raises your engagement, baby. It's amazing. Right. Someone said, Sophia, you said fake accounts, add an extra letter to your name. Your Instagram has two L's. That's correct. Sophia, S-P-A-L-L-I-N-O, as you see here, there are two L's in my last name, and I have about 48,000 followers. Any other account is completely fake. Um, we aren't together anymore, sad face. No, I am a lesbian. When I, As soon as I realized this, I was very honest with him. It took me a while to figure it out due to the way I was raised, um, but we are still very close friends. And, as we mentioned and, she, earlier, and she threw me to the wolves. Date, look, I'm thrown to the wolves. Okay, dating is freaking annoying. Okay, it's let's not go. Let's not go down that road. Let's stay Ooh. focused. Okay, what do I need to start my digital marketing agency? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> you need yourself. You need to know you're gonna you're gonna stay up a lot of late nights. 
Uh, you need to make sure the people you hire, you could trust and you would trust them with your life because you'll be trusting other people's very serious social assets with them. Um, you need to know that you have legal documents put in place to make sure that you're protected and that uh, if you're hiring contractors that they're protected and and you're you're protected because there's there are a lot of liabilities that go into it that people don't think about. Um, I do believe that you need to be showing up with a very pristine personal brand. If you're telling people you have a digital marketing agency, your personal brand needs to be solid. And I actually had my agency for a year, never went live with it because I wanted to make sure my personal brand was on point before I released it about a month ago. So make sure your personal brand is fire and that people can trust you and that you're showing up and, and talking with your face. I know someone who has an amazing social media agency locally and their agency's Instagram doesn't need to have a big social presence. That person, their face and the, their personal brand is what drives their business. So it's really not important that your agency has a huge following. I will say that. Yep. Okay. Um, you typed it in, you typed your official yep. Instagram account. Okay, great. Yep. Awesome. Thank y'all for being here for the Personal Brand Power Hour. And Robert, thank you so much. This was really kind of you to come on here and spend your time with me. No worries. If I can help us. bring some value, I'm here to help. Love it. If you guys enjoyed this episode of the Personal Brand Power Hour or this live, I'm so used to talking about a podcast, be sure to join me here next week at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I release a new episode of the Social Equity Podcast every Monday morning. So go subscribe. The link is in my bio. I also wrote an ebook on manifesting how to get what you want. There's so many books about manifesting and mindset out there. I read a, a bunch of them. They're really complicated. Mine could be called manifesting for dummies or manifesting for people who want to spend time actually manifesting and not reading a bunch of shit. It's 11 pages. I'm giving it to you for free. You can go get it at the link in my bio. It's absolutely free. Free resource, the book. Free resource, the podcast. If you want a social media audit, go ahead and book that. The link's in the bio. And if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one call, I'd love to work with you and help you build your personal brand. Robert, how can people work with you? Um, right now, <laughs> they, can DM, they can DM me or go to my link tree and book time with me. That's the only two ways right now. Once I get the subscription and private community up and running, um, then they'll be able to answer me questions on a daily basis and be part of the, um, the private community. Yes, which I'm so okay. excited for. And we're both bouncing ideas off of each other for these private communities. So freaking pumped because I'm building one too. I'm looking forward to your DM Russian River Frenchies. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Yes, go get the book, Treats for the Face. You're so welcome for the knowledge and the time. Be sure to join me back here for the Personal Brand Power Hour live on TikTok, 7 p.m. on Monday nights. And be sure to follow Robert because his videos are fire. He posts a new one pretty much every day. And you're always going to learn something amazing. Good night, everyone. Uh